We here at Roby Tech have seen a lot of mid-tower ATX cases come and go. But what gives a case staying power? The Lee & Lee Owen one Dynamic captured that staying power with an innovative design for showcasing your build. Now, Roby, this isn't going to be a review on the Lee & Lee Owen one Dynamic, is it? No, no it's not. What I'm gonna talk about today is the Antec P120 Crystal, a case that looks oddly similar to the Owen one Dynamic with a few different features. But how does it stack up? And can the P120 Crystal, like the 011 Dynamic, be in the hearts and minds of PC DIYers for years to come? Well, let's find out, shall we? Looking for an impeccable and game-changing NVMe SSD for your gaming experience? Then take a look at the Viper VP4300 Gen 4 NVMe SSD from Patriot. With read speeds up to 7400 megabytes per second and write speeds to 6800 megabytes per second, this insanely fast drive will provide you the reliability you need across your gaming and multitasking experiences. With maximum endurance, two, that's right, two heat shield options, the Viper VP4300 will equip your system with the look, performance, and reliability you need. Need. Get the Viper VP4300 today by checking out the link in the description below. Now with all the options out there for mid-tower ATX cases that are on the market, such as the Corsair 4000D Airflow, the NZXT H510 Flow, or the Lee & Lee 011 Dynamic, just to name a few, it's hard to choose which one is best for you. Now here's the deal. Do you want complete airflow? Do you want a case that will display all your internals in a way that no other case can? Those are the questions you should ask yourself before you choose. Also, will the parts actually fit in this case? More on that later. Now the case we're bringing you today is the Antec P120 Crystal. It's a mid-tower case that Antec claims is a prime combination of aesthetics and performance and one that is going to give you the ultimate mind-blowing user experience. Just by looking at it, you would think it's a Lee & Lee Owen Wine Dynamic given the dimensions and glass front and side panels, but there are some key differences. Now before we get into those differences, let's look at the outside of the case. Now the dimensions of the case are 476 millimeters by 234 millimeters by by 486 millimeters, or 18 inches deep, about nine inches wide, and 19 inches tall. And it weighs about 22 pounds and a whole lot more when you build in it, which makes this just a tad bit bigger than the 011 Dynamic, which surprises me, but not by much. Now, right from the front, you are greeted with a solid glass panel surrounded by steel, much like the 011 Dynamic. And from there, the side panel is glass as well. Now, let's talk about the side panel for a moment. It's kind of unique. It swings open as it comes with what Antec calls a slide button design on the tempered glass side panel to lock and unlock. This eliminates any thumb screws that are needed for this panel. From there, the side panel swings open and lifts to take off completely. Lee & Lee has a variation on this with the Landcool 2 series. It's a very cool design and the slide button on the tempered glass is a nice feature to have. The front panel, however, is a different story. Unlike the ON1 Dynamic, the Antex front panel is set in place and does not come off. Kind of a bummer here that it doesn't come off as it would create more room to work inside of the case. And to be honest, having access to that thing when building ON1 does make a big difference. Now continue to look around the front side of the case, we notice, unlike the OM1, the front I.O. ports and the buttons are on the top of the case instead of on the front. This may be why the front panel isn't removable. The buttons and ports consist of power and reset button, a white LED, two by USB 3.2 type A ports, an HD audio jack, and a mic jack. No front panel USB-C like the OM1 Dynamic, and when the case comes in at $120 on Newegg, we kind of expect it to at least have a USB type C port. Lack of front panel USB-C ports are usually on cases sub $100, so we're not really sure what Antec's thoughts are here with this one. Now going around the back side of the case, we see a solid steel panel with a vented portion for the side fans. Pretty standard for a case that is designed like this. They do have thumb screws on it, so the side panels are not totally toolless like the front side panel. The case comes with two different dust filters, one underneath you can pull out without lifting the case, and one magnetic one on the right for the side panel where the fans would go. All right, Roby, enough about the outside of the case. What can I actually put inside of the PC? Well, let's dive in, shall we? For motherboard support, you can fit up to an EATX style motherboard. So your crazy motherboards like your Asus ROG Maximus Z690 Extreme Glacial will fit inside of this case with no problem. Just make sure you have the correct standoffs in before you put the motherboard in. Finishing up with motherboards, because it fits EATX, 
ATX. That means you can also put in ATX, micro ATX, ITX, etc. Now for SSDs and hard drives, you can fit three two and a half inch SSDs or a three and a half inch HDD slash two and a half inch SSD convertible for your storage options. These trays for your SSDs and for hard drives are removable as well for more room, which is a nice feature as they can be a nuisance if you're looking to do a full custom loop in here. Now for your CPU coolers, the case can fit an air cooler up to 185 millimeters in height. So like your air coolers, like your Cooler Master, Master Air MA620M, dual tower cooler will fit in here with room to spare. Yay. Now staying in the cooling genre for your AIO and case fans, you can have the following configurations. In the rear, you can fit a one by 140 or a one by 120 fan or up to a 120 millimeter radiator. At the bottom, you can fit a 360 millimeter radiator, three by 140 millimeter fans or three 120 millimeter fans. That brings us to the right side or back side panel. You can fit up to one 360 millimeter radiator or two 140 millimeter fans or three 120 millimeter case fans. So Roby, well, what about the top? Well, this is one of those interesting cases where actually Antec went kind of old school and allowed you to mount the PSU at the top. So no top mountable AIO, which is a bummer for me. It's kind of where they like to place things. There you have it. Regardless of not being able to top mount, you still have plenty of fan configurations for you to decide how you want your build to be. Now, Antec recommends that you make the rear and side fans exhaust, bracket facing out, and the bottom fans intake, bracket facing in for optimal airflow. But you are ultimately the one who's going to decide where your fans go. Now for GPU support, the spec page says you can fit up to a 450 millimeter GPU inside the case. You'll see my doubts in the build when we test it later. One cool feature in the case is that it does come with a built-in VGA support bracket that is adjustable and removable. This is a nice little feature I'd love to see in more cases. But maybe that could have been removed and put a USB-C front panel in. I'd love to know down in the comments below what your thoughts are. Would you rather have a bracket or a USB-C front panel? Now for your power supplies, you can fit up to a mammoth 294 millimeter PSU inside this case. So your bigger power supplies like your Corsair HX 1200 Platinum or your Asus ROG Strix 1200 watt PSU will fit in here with room to spare. And there you have it all the features in and around the Antec P120 Crystal. This case retails for about $120 and comes in both black and white on Newegg, and you can find the link right down in the description below. But before we do any of that, let's get a build done and see how this whole thing kind of plays out. What is up everybody? Welcome, happy Saturday. For our CPU, we're going old school. Old school isn't like one generation older. We're using the uh, Intel uh, i9-11900K. For our RAM, uh, we're gonna be using Vengeance RGB Pro SL. You've seen me use this quite a bit. For our AIO, for AIAIO, we're using the NZXT Kraken Z73 RGB White Edition. This AIO looks so good inside of this case. Would you not agree? For the motherboards, we will be using the, uh, the uh, RG Strix Z590 storage. We're doing Seagate. So we're using the Seagate Fire Cuda 520 for our Cooling, we're going, we're going a little old school there as well. Um, and that is the uh, Lee and Lee SL120. We have two, uh, we're gonna be using a total of seven of these bad boys. Power supply, keeping it all white. The ROG Strix 850 watt. Speaking of the GPU we're using, it's one of those unicorns. Everybody loves it. It's the ROG Strix RTX 3080 white. Okay, here it is, it's ready. We've already done all the peel. Well, maybe we haven't, I don't know. what. Oh, this has not been peeled. Oh, peel. Don't do this one-handed. Oh, oh, it ripped. Is it an omen, guys? So there it is, our I, our 11900K. Popping it in. Watch it pop. Ooh. There you go. Okay. Whoa! Did you hear that? 99, those are all good clicks. Okay, cool, everything is good here. Well, this is not actually going to be all that easy to do. Okay, that is, that was like, I will say that was a little bit of an issue just because you couldn't, there was no easy way to hold this with the tempered glass in the front. So installing this was not as straightforward as some of the other cases. Whoa, that's not gonna fit. No, if you do a side AIO, wow, look at that. It's like nowhere near being able to fit. This one might be too long too. Nope, that's too long as well. 
Okay, it's gonna have to be a Founders Edition card. It doesn't really match, but... It actually doesn't look bad. Okay, so let's get these plugged in. It's beautiful, I love this PSU. It's just a very nice looking PSU. And here we go, turn it on. Oh, oh that was delayed, that scared me. this case change over the course of the build. I mean, right off the start, I really wanted to like this case. Aesthetically, it is very pleasing, especially in all white. And when I picked the parts, I knew I had an Instagram winner. If, if it had come out the way that it was gonna look in my head. Now, when I started building in this case, it's interesting because the more I went through the build, the more I understood what a fantastic case the Lee and Lee had made with the 011 platform. Antec wants some of that action for showing off components like the 011 case can, but without directly ripping off Lee and Lee. You see though, each of these decisions in this case, though it did make the case different, not necessarily making it better. Take for instance the top mounted PSU. It makes it thinner, which is nice, but it resulted in smaller recess for the side mounted AIO, therefore putting limits on the GPU you can mount horizontally, which I was surprised during my build. Not to mention that you lose top mounting options for the AIO and of course custom water cooling. Same can be mentioned for the latch, which is cool and I really like it, but you can't help but think that it's also why you can't remove the front panel glass. Now it's a small thing, but being able to remove that front panel glass and have the ability to reach around inside the case during building would have actually been very helpful, especially to use their included awesome integrated sag bracket, which I was very much a fan of. Now let's just hit on the vertical mounting because it came up during my system. I was super surprised post the stream to find out that Antic really just wants you to hang your GPU off of the back of the case with the small screws and no additional support for the GPU because any kind of large jolt or bump could easily bend the back plate of the GPU, which is why so many case manufacturers allow you to purchase vertical mount kits for your build, like Lee and Lee does with the 011. Look, just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. Just know that there's some risks if you do vertically mount your GPU in the case. I just wish Antec had made a bracket to help support it. Now I know it sounds like I might be ragging on the case, but I'm really not. I just want you to be aware of what you're getting into if you're going to build your own PC inside of this case. The cable management on the case is nice. And to be honest, I love the way the PC looked when it was finished, albeit I would have liked it way more with the all white aesthetic that I was going for and had originally planned. So that's the build experience. But how does it perform thermally and gaming wise? Well, let's take a pass at the thermal performance and then we'll benchmark the build we actually put inside this case, shall we? So thermals in the Antec P120 Crystal using an 11th Gen 11900K and a Founders Edition RTX 3080 were as follows. So kicking it off at idle with the PC just chilling, waiting to be used, we saw our attempts at a nice and dare I say normal 37 degrees in the open case scenario and a little bit warmer 42 in the closed case scenario. However, when we turned up the juice and pushed the CPU to see what it can do, we see temps in both open and closed case at a nice and very toasty 89 degrees. Now that is pretty warm, but again, we are being extreme here. So this is not what you're gonna get when you're gaming. And it's not really gonna cause any wear and tear issues on the CPU. But comparatively, that's not the coolest temperatures we've seen for sure. So what about GPU temps then, Roby? Well, again at idle, just letting things prepare for whatever game is to bestow upon it, we see things sitting at a nice and cool 35 degrees in the open case scenario, and an only slightly warmer 36 in the closed case. But when we let the dogs bark and unleash this Founders Edition 3080 beast upon some poor hapless benchmarking, we see things jump to a warm but very manageable 73 in open case and only a one degree warmer 74 in the closed case. Great temps for GPU and you can definitely see the effect of the direct airflow below being pushed into the GPU from those two Uni 120 fans. So CPU temps were meh and GPU temps were yeah. But what about just normal gaming performance? Well, let's talk about single player NVIDIA RTX experiences for this Founders Edition RTX 3080 paired with an 11th Gen 11900K. For Tomb Raider running at 1440p with DLSS set on the highest preset, we saw an average frame rate of 182 FPS across the runs that we did on the game. Great Tomb Raider score right there. For Metro Exodus running at 1440p, running with ray tracing on high, 
high and DLSS set to balance, we saw an average FPS across our runs of 60.05 FPS, which was pretty solid and going to be nice for playing the game. But if you do want to give yourself a little headroom, you may want to drop things down just a tad. Now for some of those AMD single player experiences, first up we got Dirt 5 running at 1440p with ultra high graphic settings. We saw an average frame rate of 133, plenty good for racing and then some. Lastly, in rounding out the single player experiences, Borderlands 3 running at the highest graphical preset, we saw an average FPS of 103.68. Close for some high frame rate shooting action, and you have some settings to play with if you want to get north of 120 FPS, but no issues if you're happy with 60 frames per second. So what about multiplayer games? Well, for Apex Legends, running at low visual settings, at 1440p, again optimized for competitive gameplay and high frame rate, we saw an average frame rate of 254.8 FPS across our multiple game sessions. Zero Zero issues with that whatsoever. For Call of Duty Warzone, again, low visual settings at 1440p, optimizing for competitive FPS gameplay and maximizing for frame rate, we saw an average FPS of 194.7. For Battlefield 2042, when it worked, again on low visual settings at 1440p, optimizing for competitive, we saw air frame rate sitting at an average of 111.3. Jeez, that game. Finally, for Fortnite, which runs like a beast on a potato at 1440p with low visual settings, again, setting everything for competitive, you can see a very high and nice and fluid 381.3 FPS. So say hello to that 360 hertz beast refresh rate monitor that just got announced at 1440p. So wrap it up, Roby. What are your final thoughts? Here is the thing. People are going to like how this case looks. In fact, our Twitter post and our Instagram post show that people like how this case looks. It's a great looking case. And if it's one that you've been eyeing, then I hope I clarified some potential issues you may have with the case before you go building into it. All that being said, I don't see any reason to not get this case if you're really wanting to. But I'm not going to say this is by far the best case in any category. I do like that Antec tried to make a case that fits in that all window 011 category. And I think in the looks department, they did really well. Though I have seen some division when it comes to that top mounted PSU. I know the top mounted PSU can be polarizing, but hey, it's always good to have choices. Just remember that if you're going to use a rear facing AIO, one that's in the back, and given it's white, you're not gonna have much of a choice because there aren't only any white AIOs that actually have a pump on the radiator, then you're gonna be vertically mounting your GPU, which may be your only option depending on the size of the graphics card. And there isn't any support, which is the... So don't go drop kick or knock over your system, not that you're going to intentionally do that, but it could potentially harm what is literally the hardest part of your PC to get, outside of if you're doing DDR5 RAM. But it's not always about what I think. I also wanna know what you think. What did you think of the Antec P120 crystal case? Did you have a favorite feature? Do you like the look? I would love to know all of these things down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video or go live right here on Robitech. If you have questions about this case or any other tech related question, then check out our amazing Discord server filled with other tech and PC enthusiasts who love to share their thoughts and ideas on these very subjects. Looking for cheap tech? Then check out robitechdeals.com or at robitechdeals on Twitter, where we have our guy Tom scouring the internet for the best deals on all the things from techs to PC components to even TVs and games. Finally, you can follow me or other members of my team on all other socials at Robitech everywhere. We hope you enjoyed this video and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.